All right. Today's question is about resonance structures, and so let me go ahead and introduce you guys. So even if you're not taking the MCAT and you want to review resonance structures, this is a great video for you to do it. It says, how many resonance structures are there for one molecule of CO2? Now, this is a really good question because, first of all, what is a resonance structure? A resonance structure... Um, is basically a way of representing uh, the delocalized uh, uh, electrons within a molecule. Okay, the delocalized electrons within molecule. So, you may be wondering what the heck does that mean? Um, well, I will tell you what that means. But another thing that this question will also bring up is this aspect of arrow pushing. So there are two main concepts here. Obviously, resonance structures, which is the biggest concept. But to get resonance structures, we also need to know a bit about arrow pushing. So both of these things um, is something that we should learn, and I'm going to go ahead and show you. So those are two main concepts. Resonance structure is one, arrow pushing is two. So let's start with an example, not with CO2, but with this thing I like to call carbonate. So here's the Lewis dot structure for carbonate, okay? Um, I drew it out before just because I didn't want to waste any time. Um, but if I go ahead and number these oxygens, right? Let's say this is oxygen number one, this is oxygen number two, this is oxygen number three. Who's to say that the double bond always has to be between carbon and oxygen number one? Why can't the double bond be between carbon and oxygen number two? That's equally um, a good way of representing it. So what you're going to see is there's a different way of drawing this Lewis dot structure. And I'm going to show you how to do it with arrow pushing. So if I make this lone pair come down here, and I make this double bond's lone pair go up, this is what we're going to, what's going to give rise to a resonance structure. And notice how I'm all doing it all with arrow pushing. I, the arrow represents a lone pair of electrons, and I used it to move the double bond from carbon uh, from oxygen number one onto oxygen number two, right? So now this is our brand new structure, and I'm going to draw in the electrons now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, right? This is the new structure, and this is an equally valid way of representing the carbonate ion. Just because we drew it one way does not mean that's the only way, because this is resonance structure number one, and this is resonance structure number two, which is just as equally valid, because we moved the double bond around. Now, you might be thinking, well, can't the double bond also be between this oxygen and this carbon? And I'd say yes, it could. So I undo, I'm undo. i going to undo that, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's let's make the double bond between this. So let me want to draw the arrow. This lone pair goes down here to form another bond with the carbon. And this bond comes out here um, because we want to make sure carbon only has four bonds, right, because of the octet rule. So now we get this new other structure where this oxygen now has a double bond to the carbon. And these oxygens on the sides now have the negative charge. So this is the third and final resonance structure of the carbonate ion. So now let me just go ahead and draw in the lone pairs to make sure we understand where everything is. And you'll see that these are all three equivalent resonance structures for the carbonate ion. They're equivalent because the double bond can equally be shared between all three oxygens. All three structures here have the same formal charges on ions, and all three formal structures here have the octet rule uh, satisfied. So that is um, the Lewis dot structure for carbonate and the res respective um, and the respective Lewis and the respective resonance structures. But more importantly, I want you to know that the true the true structure is not any one of these three. The true structure of a CO3 2 minus is actually a, is a combination of these three. Okay? The two structure of CO3 2 minus is not actually going to look like one, two, or three. It's going to look like a hybrid of all three. Okay? So I want you to know that the true structure is a hybrid of all three. And honestly, if you wanted to really know what it looks like, the carbonate ion, if you were to average all three of these structures, would probably have um, a one-third bond between every carbon and oxygen. Instead of having a double bond rotating around, it's probably going to have that double bond equally distributed. But there's no way for us to draw four-thirds of a bond. So we draw resonance structures to depict all three ways. So these are all three ways that we think 
the molecule could be arranged. But the true molecule is the weighted average of all three, is the way I like to think about it. So now let's move on to carbon dioxide, right? So CO2 is what, the, how many resonance structures are there for CO2? So let's do this. Let's start with the most common description of CO2, which is it's drawn like this. And I'm sure most of you have seen it drawn like this. Um, and you might think, yeah, this is, this is a pretty awesome structure. Um, it's linear, sp hybridized with the carbon. Uh, if you don't know what hybridization is, don't worry about it. But now, are there any resonance structures to this? And I'm going to tell you, yes, there are. Uh, and the only reason you probably don't know about it is because they're not shown as much. But let me show you. What if I took this electron pair and moved it down right here to make a triple bond between oxygen, I'm going to name it oxygen 1, and this is going to be oxygen 2 right here. This is oxygen 2. So if I took this lone pair and moved it down here, and now I took this bond and moved it onto this oxygen, that is actually, believe it or not, a resonance structure of CO2. It's, it's going to be drawn like this now. Now we have three bonds between this carbon and oxygen, and one bond between this carbon and oxygen. Now draw in the lone pairs, and you get one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you know your formal charges, you'll also know that this means there's a positive charge here and a negative charge here. Right? Cool beans. But are there any more resonance structures to this? And you believe it or not, there actually are. So let's start with the <laughs> let's start with the original molecule. Remember, it's always drawn like this. And if we start with this original molecule again, uh, and draw in the lone pairs, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, we can actually do the exact same thing we did before, except in the opposite direction. So remember this carbon, remember oxygen number one right here and oxygen number two right here? Well, now, let's move the electron down from oxygen number two and move it up from, uh, move it up from the carbon bond on the opposing side. And you'll see that the resonance structure here is going to give you one, two, three, three, like this. And, and then you'll have one bond like this and a minus. Right now we draw in the lone pairs, and what you ended up getting is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Right now, let me show you all of this. So this is resonance structure number one. This is resonance structure number two, and this is resonance structure number three. So the question is, how many resonance structures does CO two have? So the answer to this question is three. Um, let me go ahead and circle that. But we're not done, because I want to incentivize you guys to think a bit further. So in carbonate, in carbonate, we saw that all three resonance structures are equal, right? All three of these resonance structures are equal because they, they, they satisfy the octet rule, every single one of them. The formal charge on every single one of them is the same. And so they look essentially identical, and the weighted average of all three is the true structure. But for CO2, are all three of these equal? Is structure 1 equal to structure 2 equal to structure 3? Is the true molecule of CO2 um, going to be a weighted average of all three? It will be a weighted average of all three, but these guys, uh, I'm going to start on the new page here. I want to make sure we understand this. So I want to make sure we draw it all out. So this one is going to be one possible resonance structure. Another one is going to be this possible resonance structure. And the last one is the this one. Okay, so these are all three resonance structures. Which one of these do you think contributes most to the CO2 structure? Believe it or not, these, these top two are minority contributors. Minority contributors. I don't know, is it OR? And the reason why they're minority contributors is because they have formal charges. Do you notice how they have a charge on the oxygen? The charges make this Lewis structure less favorable than this one. This is the major resonance contributor. And the reason for that is because there has no formal charge. Whereas in the structures that are shown above it, there is a formal charge. And that formal charge makes it unfavorable because nature does not like charge. More importantly, so what does CO2 actually look like then? Because I told you resonance structures represent, uh, represent 
hybrids of what the actual molecule is. Well, the CO2 molecule, if I were to guess, is probably like 99% similar to this. And then 1% of the actual structure might include the top two. Okay, and that's because the top two are such minor contributors. Okay, they're such minor contributors to the overall structure of CO2 that they, even though they represent something true, like there is some triple bond character here and there is some triple bond character here, the true nature of CO2 is actually very much like the third structure. And so with that, we have the overall answer, which is there are three resonance hybrids of CO2, but there's one major resonance contributor. But that still does not, uh, but that still does not change the answer of our question, because there are technically still three resonance structures of CO2. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. See you next time.